Okay, the next data collection method that we've got here in the list is interviews. So if you scroll down, you'll note that uh, unlike most of the others where I only have a single resource, I actually have two resources that um, I've put in there for interviews. The first one comes from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Um, it's a nice little overview that they've got here on interviewing. You'll note that uh, you've got each of these five types of interviews that they've linked up here, and I'll use the term interviews very loosely um, in that so you can see the different types here. They also provide some advice here on developing an interview guide, oftentimes called an interview protocol. And then here at the bottom, you've got a list of potential resources, uh, most of which are books or articles uh, that you can access here. The other nice thing that I'll mention, and you'll see the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation comes up a couple of times in this particular one, but they have this initiative called the Qualitative Research Guidelines Project. And if you were to go out to that project, uh, what you'd find is that there's a lot of different... Um, methods that they will talk about throughout this particular project. So the overall initiative is a useful uh, resource for you moving forward beyond just the individual stuff that it says here about interviewing. Now I mentioned that um, I would use the term five types of interviews loosely because the fifth one that they've got here is focus groups. And focus groups aren't interviews. There are two different things. And the easiest way I can uh, differentiate between the two is the difference between a the way most class discussions actually occur and the way a discussion is supposed to occur. So if you think about in the K-12 environment, and um, maybe you do this in your own class, I can guarantee that at some point in time when you were a student in the K-12 environment, and likely a student even in higher ed, we've had this kind of discussion where the instructor or the teacher asks a question, and student A answers that question. Student B answers that question. Then student C answers that question. And then student A is remembering something or thinking of something new to say, but still directly answering the question, answers the question. And what ends up happening is you have a didactic conversation among multiple people. That isn't a focus group, even though there's multiple people involved. It's a group interview, because essentially what's happening is you have an interviewer that's asking a question, and then just a bunch of people that's responding to a question. That's very different than the way a class discussion is supposed to be. You know, class discussion, is the way it's in which it's supposed to happen is, I'm supposed to throw out a broad, general kind of overview statement or question or position, and then I just sit back as the facilitator, if you will, and let the participants of the discussion actually drive the discussion. So while student A and student B might respond directly to the prompt that I have, student C might ignore my prompt altogether and talk about something that student A said that caught their attention. That may make student A then want to respond directly to student C, even though you know it has nothing to do with the question that I asked, but is still on topic. That's a focus group. That is also, by definition, an actual discussion, because it's not a... A, a, a group question and answer, if you will, like so oftentimes class discussions end up being, but it's an opportunity for people to interact with each other. So the biggest difference between an interview and a focus group from a research standpoint is that in order for a focus group to occur, you need to have the interaction of participants with each other. And the data that they generate isn't necessarily directly in response to a question that the moderator or facilitator or focus group leader has asked, but is still on topic along the lines of information that other people have talked about um, throughout. So while focus group is listed here, and you can use that obviously as a potential resource if you wanted to use focus groups as a part of your data collection, I want to underscore the point for you that it isn't a type of interview. It is a separate type of qualitative data collection. So in addition to the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation material, I've also 
added an article from the qualitative report that looks at qualitative interview design. So this one really does a good job, I think, and it'll take a second to load here. Um, my internet seems to be moving a little slowly. There we go. Um, so I think it really does a good job of going through and talking about different types of interviews in much the way the Robert Wood uh, Johnson Foundation um, site had. But then it gives you a lot of concrete advice. So here's how you can start to prepare for the interview. Here's how you select the participants. Here's how you would pilot test your interview protocol. Here's how to go about writing good research questions or good interview questions. And here's how to go about, you know, coming up with good follow-up questions either beforehand and, you know, anticipating what people might say or on the fly. So there's a lot of good information in here about actually sort of the how to aspect plus as a an article that you know has been published um, in the qualitative report there are a couple of citations here you note the formatting gets fooled up a little bit here because while it looks like there's only two you can see this one here actually has a number of them in there so there's Chanel um, but there's also a Creswell in there there's another Creswell in there and then there's a Gal Gal Borg in there and then there's also a uh, Cavell in there before you get to McNamara. So there's a number of ones in there. So as you look at this, if interviewing is something that you're thinking about doing, don't just think that it's just those two that are there. Note that there are multiple references here, although you'll note that with the exception of the Chanel piece and the Cavell piece and the McNamara piece, all of the other ones, so the two uh, Creswell ones, the, the Gal Gal and Borg ones, those are all general books. So um, this here looks to be actually an earlier edition, Research Design, Qualitative, Quantitative, Mixed Methods Approaches, looks to be an earlier edition of actually our textbook. Um, this Qualitative Inquiry and Research Design, Choosing Among the Five Approaches, again, a general qualitative book. Educational Research and Introduction, again, a general ed research book, similar to those that I had talked about in the introductory or overview video for this particular week. So there are a number of additional resources that I'd like to share with you in addition to the ones that I've posted in Blackboard. Uh, I will mention that that cavail that I mentioned at the end of the um, article from the qualitative report that's in there, he is um, one of the individuals that is really seen as uh, seminal within the field when you're looking at uh, how to conduct interview research. Another seminal person within the field is this guy here, uh, Robert C or sorry Irving Seidman, um, S I sorry S E I D M A N. Uh, this book of his here, I've got the second edition one. I think there's a more recent one out. Um, but uh, interviewing his qualitative research, a guide for researchers in education and social sciences. Uh, if you look through, uh, particularly if you have been scanning any of the theses or dissertations that you find in the ProQuest database, oftentimes you'll find. Cavale or Seedman or the other sort of seminal person in the field is this guy Robert Weiss and Learning from Strangers is actually um, his sort of seminal book if, if you were doing a course on interviewing or just on qualitative research in particular this here would likely be required reading in that particular course so Learning from Strangers uh, The Art and Method of Qualitative Interview Studies so again, um, Weiss, W-E-I-S-S, -S, is the uh, author of this one. There are a number of other books that are out there that you can get. There's a, another nice one that I've used from time to time called um, The Research Interview Uses and Approaches by Brennan Brown and Cantor. Uh, Living the Questions by uh, Hubbard and Miller Power. Is not bad. This is actually one that I uh, picked up when I was uh, actually a, a master's student working on my master's thesis. So it's um, a, a reasonable level and it's more directed towards teachers as interviewers. Um, Sage had this series that they had running called the Qualitative Research Series. And in that series they had, I think it was something like 80 or 90 different 
uh, volumes in there. Uh, two that they have that specifically focus upon interviews. Uh, one called The Long Interview uh, by Grant McCracken. So if you were doing something where you were looking at, say, an ethnography or maybe doing a life history, uh, this might be useful. Um, for the purposes of interviewing students in particular, I've always found this one by uh, Holston and um, Gub... Let me see. Gubram which is called the active interview. I've always found this one to be quite useful. Uh, so, and these ones, I believe, uh, actually all of the ones from the Sage Qualitative Series that uh, are available, you can probably pick them up on Amazon for, you know, five or eight or ten dollars. So these tend to be fairly, you know, they're nice paperback, they're fairly thin, so they're fairly quick reads. Although, you know, they are like mostly between 70 and 90 pages. As you can see, this one here happens to be 80. Um, but they tend to give you a lot of good advice in here. They tend to be really um, hands-on in terms of this is how you go about doing it. Very much like the article that you've got about interviewing in the uh, Blackboard. Uh, the final resource I'll mention, there is actually a handbook on interview research, uh, which you know is, as you can see, quite sizable. So that might be something. I don't know if the library has a copy of it or if they could get a hard copy through interlibrary loan or if you were to go to the SAGE website and if there was a particular chapter that um, you were interested in um, that might be useful to you. One that I know a lot of students in the past have uh, particularly been interested in, uh, Chapter 9 is Interviewing Children and Adolescents. Uh, so that's one that they've tended to find quite useful. Uh, the uh, authors of that one are Donna Edler, E-D-E-R, and Laura Fingerson, F-I-N-G-E-R-S-O-N. So, you know, that's, you know, like I say, if you don't want to try to get the entire book through the library, uh, maybe requesting just that chapter through interlibrary loan. And with any of these books, you should be able to go on to the publisher's website. So by searching the title of any of these, you would be able to, um, you know, find it on Amazon and figure out who the publisher is. And then from there, actually look at the table of contents. And these days, Amazon, in many cases, has the table of contents in there because they've got that look inside feature that they have available to them. So those are some opportunities that you might have available to you that, uh, you know, resources that could be useful for you as you start to explore interviewing as a possible data collection method.